What's up, everybody? Welcome to the special edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. I know I'm usually coming at you at the very least three times a week over the digital airways of YouTube, but I am making an exception on this particular day. Before I get into that, I'm here in my new studios thanks to our official studio sponsor, FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official studio sponsor of the Stephen A. Smith Show. As always, I always take a moment to show my level of love and appreciation for all of my followers and subscribers. We continue to grow and climb, and we've now exceeded in excess of 434,000 subscribers in the first nine months. Can't thank y'all enough for the love. Please keep it coming, and I'll keep on coming. Please make sure to like and follow uh, the Stephen A. Smith Show right here on YouTube. Just click the bell to get notified of all of our new content. While you're at doing all of that, please don't forget to pick up a copy of my New York Times best-selling book, Straight Shooter a memoir of second chances and first takes. Please go to straightshooterbook.com. That's straightshooterbook.com to get yourself a copy. Makes for a perfect Christmas gift. At the end of each show, I'm customarily taking calls, but that won't be the case today. Again, this is a special edition uh, because I'm talk about to talk to a very, very special person. You know, in life, <clears throat> no matter what profession you're in, there's always a source of inspiration. There's always somebody you like that you witness because you view them for being at the mountaintop. That's your vantage point of them. That's how you view them. When it comes to certain people, they're simply worthy of such accolades. It's just that simple. And when I think about the guest that I'm about to talk to, the guest that I want you all to listen to, he's taken many hits throughout the years. He's experienced his level of frustration. He's won a lot. He's lost sometimes, but no matter what, he's never been viewed as anything but a winner because he keeps on striving and he keeps on marching forward, no matter what level of adversity hits him. And in the spirit of doing all of that while enduring those trials and tribulations, this man that I'm about to talk to is somebody that still managed to perform at a very, very elite level. You know him as prime. So do I. You may not know him as your brother, but he is mine. He is the greatest cornerback in the history of football. He is one of, if not the greatest special team performer in the history of football. I know of very few people who have done it better, if anyone at all. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. He played in Major League Baseball for nine years. At one point in time in his career, he was doing both at the same time. This is who he is. His name is Deion Sanders. He's the head coach at the University of Colorado. They didn't finish strong. After starting off 3-0, screaming at reporters, asking them, did you believe, did you believe in winning his first three games of the season? From that point forward, at least record-wise, they know it's died. They got embarrassed on national television by Oregon. They lost a 29-point lead a few weeks later against Stanford. In the midst of all of that, there were nail biters, games that they were in, but they couldn't close out. And they ultimately ended the season losing eight of nine games in six straight. In most instances, that's the reason to look at somebody and say, they just ain't the answer. They just ain't the one. But nobody would dare say that about Deion Sanders because you know that somehow, some way, the brother finds a way to win at whatever it is that he chooses to do. What inspires him? What's motivated him? What's uplifted him to new heights when an abyss was right in front of him and he refused to fall in it or stay down once falling? What is it that makes this man the man who he is? What is it that inspires him to be all that he is and all that he aims to be? So many of those questions come up. And that was about him before he became the head coach at the University of Colorado. Imagine what it is now that he was named by Sports Illustrated as the sports person of the year. Think about that for a second. Think about why he received such a pristine honor. And then ask yourself, are you sure he's somebody that you should be rooting against? Are you sure he's somebody you should want to root against? All of that, 
or nuggets of inspiration that inspires me to have the conversation that I'm about to have with him. And that's why he's up next. There's only one prime time, baby. His name is Deion Sanders. And he's up next right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Back with him and yours truly in a minute. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com SAS and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.com. Org slash chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana, 1 800 522 4700, or visit ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas, 1 877 770 STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, visit 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, or call 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope NY or text Hope NY in New York. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show. If I seem calm, cool, and collected, I'm lying because I'm incredibly excited. I'm talking to my brother next, okay? My guest today is the two-time Super Bowl champion, is known as being the greatest cornerback in the history of football. He's also now the head coach for the University of Colorado Buffaloes. He's my brother, my boy, the one and only primetime himself, Mr. Deion Sanders. What's up, big time? How are you, man? How's I everything? I am honored, man. I am honored. You know how awkward it feels when you introduce me every time I come on your show. You know how awkward that feels. You're my brother. What, what you doing introducing me? You're my brother. I, I, I have to, man, because you deserve it. But listen, I've often told folks, you so elite, you so big time, I was shocked to see you playing in the daytime. That's, that's what I was telling people. I mean, I mean, prime time, just, just keep him out of the daytime. He's meant for the bright lights, not the sunshine, okay? Uh, uh, listen, prime, let's get right to it because it's got a lot of stuff to get into. You got a book out. I want to talk about that a little bit or whatever. But obviously, let's get to your season and and. and Put in perspective of what this season was like for you. Your first in Colorado, you inherited a program that went one and eleven before you arrived. You finished right. four and eight, but you lost six straight. You lost eight of your last nine games. I know what we look at as you, but I mean, even here, they got you as the 2023 Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year. Congratulations on that. Put it to Thanks. perspective what things are like for you right now and how this season. How oh. would you describe the season? Oh. Oh, right now, first of all, it's popping. It's popping because we are recruiting our butts off. Um, last year was a, a year that we had to just fulfill needs and desires and fill a roster because the roster we inherited was atrocious. So we had to fill a roster, and then we filled the roster, and we got everybody excited when we were excited as well, and we instilled hope. But this year is the year of expectation. So not hope now. We got to translate that to expectation, and I expect new things. You got to understand, when we went to Jackson our first spring, it was similar. It was similar. But then that next year, we got everything we needed because we assessed the situation, evaluated all the players. Now we know just what we needed, and we went out and got it. And that's what we're doing right now on the brink of uh, National Signing Day on Wednesday it's phenomenal what we're doing throughout the portal as well as signing the young high school players. Is there anything from last season that you would change? And before you answer that question, look at the premise that I'm coming from. I remember how Georgia were the reigning two-time defending back-to-back -back national champions. Nick Saban is considered university as the greatest coach in, in, in college football history by a lot of people. But yet primetime in Colorado was getting more shine during spring football and all the attention was being drawn to you. I know there were obvious benefits to that, which I am quite sure you are benefiting from because you deserve it. Because damn it, nobody was thinking about Colorado until you arrived. So let's be clear. I support that. But I'm wondering 
wondering if there was anything that you could have done differently. Was there something? And if so, what was that something? Um, God, I'm trying to, you know, I'm not lost in words. I'm trying to package this thing correctly so I won't get in trouble. Sure. The process of selection and the process of who you allow into your space, into that locker room, on that staff, in your environment, it could have been more carefully selected. Mm. It, it, it could have been. Now, um, I had to go back to, okay, if it's going to be on me, it's going to be on me. <laughs> it's going to be on me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm making all these selections. I'm uh, making sure I'm crossing my T's and dotting my I's. I'm making sure I'm hands on every darn thing from the uniforms <laughs> to what transpires on the field. So I, I could have been a little more hands on. But without naming names, forget the names, because I know we, we don't want you to do that. But what I'm asking is when you say that you could have been more hands on, you've got to be careful about who you let into that personal space. Right. Could you right. crystallize for the viewers what kind of damage not doing those things caused you and your program for this first year, your rookie oh. year at Colorado? Oh, my God. Tremendous, because. I'm a personal guy. Stephen, you're a personal guy. We deal in relationships. We're very relational. So if that's not translated from the top, it's never going to make it to the bottom. So that's who I am, what I am, how I am, and that's how I'm going to continue to be. And I got to make sure the kids in that locker room at all costs, with all staff, they come first. And we can relate. We could talk. We could we could understand one another. We could communicate and we could fulfill their their needs intently, not just financially, but just uh, aesthetically, man. Like these kids, they, they need someone to talk to. They need someone to 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 exhaust themselves to. And we got to make sure we have the right people in place so that they could be unapologetically who they are. And, I, and I'm going to I'm doing a better job with that, making sure we have the resources and the persons that can make sure these kids become professionals, mm -hmm. not just professional athletes, professionals, because the better they are off the field, the better they're going to be on the field. I find you to be in a tricky situation because I know how much you love kids mm -hmm. and I know how, right. how much you love young men and to help them grow into being mature young men. I know how I always known how important that is to you. But I also know how important fatherhood is to you. And no matter how much you love those kids, you have not one but two sons on your team. And one of them happens to be the superstar of the team. So it ain't like it's just your son. He, he's you the man for that Because the other one's going to get mad. You, you, you better not say one of them because the other one's going to get mad. Uh, I'm sorry. You say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You talk both about, of them. Both of them. You know, Shaq's going to be mad. You're going to be getting the DM from Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you covered. But 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 I, I, I often wondered how difficult that was for you this season, especially considering the fact that your son, the star quarterback, was sacked about 56 times for crying out loud. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, what was that like for you as a, a, the, the challenging element of that, watching your son go through what he did, what he went through because you didn't have hogs. I'm not questioning anybody's skill. I'm talking about hogs. Right. I'm talking about the meat potato brothers. Now you're right about that. You're 100%, but you got to understand how I raised him. Right. Like we, we always lived affluently. We, we were taken care of because God blessed me and I worked my butt off. But we perform. My kids played in the inner city from day one, from the rip. Mm -hmm. Like, so they understand everything <laughs> ain't going to be rosy. Everything ain't going to be 100. You're going to have to work through some adversity in life. And I love that about him. He never once complained about his line. Uh, never once complained about the plays. Never once complained about anything. He just worked through them. But as a father, you know what's supposed to transpire. You know what's supposed to happen. And let's let's just take the father out of it. Just as the coach, this ain't right. This, 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 we we better than this. Then then you put in the father element after the game, saying my son had to go in there and get shot up at halftime just to make it through the fourth quarter. This ain't it. We better than this. Mm. No no no. We we better than this. And are y'all forgetting that this is my son? When we putting all this stuff together, are y'all forgetting this is my son? Mm. So 
sometimes that's the only element of it that happens way after the game, not during the game. He He's my player during the game. After the game, when I'm seeing him limping and in the ice tub and trying to prepare all week physically, and I have to give him a day off every week because his body don't even recover to Wednesday. That was the tough part of it. What did you say to him when he was going through that? What were you saying to him as the coach that was different than what dad would be saying to him if you were not the coach? We're going to do better than this. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this. Mm. And the thing about it, he's the kind of guy that's going to help you fix it because you talking about the one of the greatest recruiters. He and Travis are probably the, the best recruiters we got on the squad because mm. – these kids DM them and hit them and, and just want to talk to them about coming there and, and want to play with them because of the way they approach the game. Mm. So they know what they need. And the thing about coaches, sometimes we can be fooled and hoodwinked and bamboozled because of what we see we think is authentic. These kids know who's real and what's real and what's, what they need to go to that next level and who's a real dog and not a cat. Mm. They know. So they help us go out there and attract those different type of players. And when they come on campus, this is a wrap. I think, shoot, we're at probably 90%. If you make it to Boulder, Colorado, you going to commit. Mm. So don't, if you don't want to, if you <laughs> don't come, because if you come, you going to commit. I promise you that. You got the number one offensive lineman in the country coming to your program. I want you to talk about him. I want you to talk about the other guys uh, that, uh, that you've got that have committed to the program <laughs> right now because I think they got you at number two right now in terms of recruiting. Number two right now. Uh, is it number one? Is it number it one? You made probably a mistake on your computer. Just <laughs> refresh. Just refresh. My yeah. bad. Yeah. My refresh. bad. It's number, it's number one. My yeah, bad. Yeah. Just refresh. Should have it to you. Let me tell you something. The big fella, man. I call him Big Time. That's his new nickname. He Big Time. You know, he, that's Big Time. He knows how to articulate himself. He knows what he wants, but he's willing to work to go get it. And he challenges guys all day long. He would get on the phone and call another live. Hey, man, you coming or not? Because we ain't got time for that. What you going to do? Are you, coach, uh-uh. He's just trying to get a bag. We don't want him. He, don't, he ain't thinking about the game. He ain't thinking about how he fit in the scheme. He just want a bag. We don't want him. That's how he approaches things. This kid practices his butt off. I mean, that's what we've gleaned. But he's a man, man. I mean, he, he come from tough beginnings. His, his uncle is a rider. I mean, a rider and, and got his back wholeheartedly. And he hadn't come up the soft way. This kid is a pro mentally and physically right now. He just has to put it on grass. Okay. I, I, I love everything about this kid and who, who he's going to become. I promise you this kid is going to be a first rounder, if not the top five pick. For those of you, for those that may not know who you're talking about, the kid's name is Jordan Seaton. Yeah. Number one Big offensive Jay. tackle recruit, 6'5", 287 pounds. But okay. nasty. Two, and nasty. <laughs> right. And nasty. How many Trying of those out there? You all. How Trying many? to finish you all. The trying to make you a sprinkler head. He don't just want to put you in the grass. He's trying to make you a sprinkler head. Mm. What did he say to you when he committed to Colorado? Because I want to guess. I want to guess. Okay. I, I want to guess that he said this to you. Your son don't have anything to worry about next season. That's what, I, I think he, that's what I'm yeah. thinking he said to you. Yeah, yeah. He said, Coach, you don't have to worry about that no more. But guess what? Not only did he say that, every darn lineman that we that, that committed to us has said that. Let, let me tell you something that, that happened. The, the, the young men go to a local restaurant to convene with one another, to get to know one another. And, you know, they all want to meet Shador. They all want to meet Travis and Jimmy and some of our – and Dylan and some of our, our, our key players offensively. If this gentleman came in from within the crowd, came over and, and got smart with Shador mm. and said things derogatory about me. Mm. Now, Shador is – he's a walk away – he ain't, she don't even do nothing. Shallow would have swung. Shallow is different. He would have swung. He would have swung. That's why God knew who to put in that situation. But before Shador could even readdress the gentleman, his lineman on a recruiting visit came over there and was about to handle business. Mm. They had to be stopped and they hadn't even committed yet. Mm. So that lets you know where this thing is going. Then they went on to commit hours later. 
That's what we had the week a couple weeks ago when we, we signed like several linemen. But it's a whole different thought process, a whole different way of approaching your quarterback, approaching the game and understand, understanding what what you have and, and feel. Uh, our new offensive line coach, I mean, this brother played in the league for a multitude of years and played at a high level in the communication process with he and those guys. Oh, my God. Oh my God, Stephen! Mm. It's 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 just different, man. It's and, just and, different. And you, and you, you you talk about the difference, and I got to tell you because I remember when y'all lost forty two to six on national television, Oregon, mm -hmm. and I texted you. I texted you that night, and I was like this. Right. I said, and right. I love the quote, and, and I was so proud of you because you you echoed the quote that I wanted you to echo, and that was, "Get me now." Give me now. Enjoy this moment because because I'm going to remember all of this and, and, and we'll see you again. Oregon got the better of you. Stanford got the better of you. Uh, we, we, we just know this down the line. Oregon State, Arizona, Washington State, Utah. I'm looking at those things happening to you. And do you believe I find it hard to believe that these kids want to come to Boulder, Colorado? I'm not knocking Boulder, Colorado, but I just find it hard to believe they want to come because of you. And they want to come well, because well, they saw the world stacked against you. One thing, Stephen. They but in those games, now you 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 didn't mention. Now we got our butts kicked against Boulder and Washington. Not Boulder, man. Talking about Boulder yeah, yeah. against Oregon and Washington State. Two elite teams. Every other, yeah, every other game. Every other game in the game, we were three to seven points right. of a victory. Okay. We were within three to seven points. Right. For, for a team that just met each other. So that's the hope. That mm -hmm. I instill each week, mm -hmm. and these young men, they never quit, man. That's why I got so much love for them. They never gave up. They never quit in the face of adversity. They never darn quit. Even the last game when their quarterback wasn't even out there, right. they never gave up. Right. Lose again. I think it was three to uh, seven points. Right. Lost. But let so me personalize talk. it. Let, let me personalize it. I'm asking a question from this from this from this perspective, Prime. You know good and damn well Stephen ain't coming. Stephen ain't coming to Col Boulder, Colorado, if it were not for you. I came there because of you twice. Okay, we understand. What I'm saying I brought a national television show to Boulder, Colorado. Let me be very, very clear. I I'm not coming to no damn Boulder, Colorado, if it wasn't for my man Prime. Okay, that's not happening. All right. Now I'm watching players, and it seems to me like the players are saying the same thing. There was yeah. a personal affront that they took from watching you struggle this year and feeling like there was a shrapnel of heat coming your way where people wanted you to fail. Did you get that impression that the players, yeah. that's what they were gravitating to you towards? I, I, felt, I felt it. I felt some was happy because they've never seen me in that position in life. That's right. And they enjoyed it. That's why I said things like, and I was dead serious, you better get me now. Because I know what's going to happen. Because I know what we got and I know what we're building and I know the staff. I know what we're going to uh, bring together in Boulder, Colorado. It's beautiful. Stephen A, we sold out everywhere we went. Mm -hmm. A lot of those teams we played, they hadn't sold out, period. We sold out the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. We sold out every place we went to play. And just the, the, the notoriety and the publicity, and that's what these kids want, man. And I want them to have it. But I always tell them the same light that makes you shine. <laughs> it's going to make you shine another way if you don't handle your business. So they love it. They love that stage and the national presence. They love it. And that's what we want to get. You know, even with the documentary. Mm. On Pride Video, come on, man. We were number one for the first three weeks of it. Right. So they love that attention, that exposure, and that's what we're going to give them. All we got to do is come together, fill these holes that we had last season, and we we pretty much done that. We got a couple more spots to go. But, my God, I love, love what I see. Oh, I love what I see. Mm. God, I love what I see. Elevate and, and dominate. We're going to make you proud, my brother. We're going to make you proud, my brother. Listen, I, know, I know you know what can happen and what's going to happen. Because you're a visionary and you see long term, you don't see the quick sprint. I know you know, and we're going to make you proud. I believe in you. I believe in you. Did you have a problem with me saying that I wish you were in the SEC? Because you know I do. You know, that, that, that's my dream. My dream is, is for you because I think that's the number one football conference, at least right I got now. An SEC I, that's in my what I wish. A 560 SEC Mercedes I did, uh, from way back when. <laughs> Dropped the cut, the top off, and all that. That's the only SEC I'm going to see. I love Boulder, Colorado. I love the Big 12. I love everything that we're doing. 
And I love where we're going. And guess what? I know how to get there. And I'll be darned if we ain't going to get there. I'm so excited right now, my brother. I don't even, I don't have no bad days. I'm coaching my kids. I'm seeing my daughter every day. My son is videoing me coaching my kids and seeing my daughter. And I'm talking to Stephen A. Smith. Man, boy, please. Somebody better <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Man, somebody better stop. Your book, your program, your documentary, so much that you're doing, knowing you the way and you and I go back decades now. You know I love you. You're my brother. You, I ain't apologizing for that to no damn soul. Let's be very, very clear about that. I can't express to you how happy I was when you, you first started coaching at an HBCU at, J at Jackson State, and then you obviously transitioned to Colorado, what you did for HBCUs, what you did for us as black people, bringing attention to so much talent that was untapped, that wasn't being tapped into, and then you go to Colorado and you're doing this. I know how mission-minded you are. And I throw yes, all of that out to say, I want you to articulate what you've been articulating to me for years when you were coaching high schoolers, when you were coaching prep ballers. What's your ultimate mission as a coach and as a leader? To provoke change. To, to, to bring out the good when you even sense bad. To, to, to bring out the sunshine even in the rain. To guarantee you when you drop your son off that he's going to be a professional, not just a football player, but a man. That he's going to be a, a father, not a baby daddy. That he's going to be good in the midst of all the bad. That he's going to make the profound and the perfect, perfected decision. Because now it becomes a habit because he's been teaching, taught this for every day that ends with a why. Steve, Nay, I don't work. This is my calling. This is my life. This is what I love. So when we got the ignorance in the adolescence, coming, oh, he's going to leave and go well for what? God got me. I'm straight. If you look around and just glean, if I can turn this laptop around, you know I'm straight. Mm. So it ain't about a bag. It's about purpose. It's about a calling. It's about being who God has called me to be. And not only am I going to be it, I'm going to dominate it. Every day you get up, I know you, dog. That's why we talk. That's why we communicate. That's why we got the love that we have for one another. Because I know you. And I know your purpose. And I know what you get up. Even in the midst of the hate and the adolescence and the ignorance that you deal with. You don't stop. So how can I? Ain't this is stop. a conflict. This is who we are, my brother. We ain't don't have stop. no state today. You ain't got no choice but to get your butt up and do what you do. I know what you said and how you doing it for your mama. That's your why. But we don't have no choice. Mm. This is who God has impregnated us to be. Mm. And I love it. Darn it, I love it. And the more they talk, ooh, it just it, it just gives me energy like the little engine that could. The more mm -hmm. they naysay, the more they doubt. It just it just it just turns me on. Mm. Very is it like aphrodisiac? It just turns me on. I love it. Very last question. I know that's what you were thinking when you wanted the Florida State job years ago before you ever landed in Boulder, Colorado. One of the things I went on the air and I said when Florida State was left out of the college football playoffs, if Prime right. was that coach, they wouldn't have been left out. Undefeated season with primetime Deion Sanders coaching them? Oh, hell no. There would have been mutiny amongst the college football landscape. The world would have went berserk. If prime time, was I wrong yeah. in saying was I wrong in saying such a thing? Well, let's digress a bit and come back and say there were a couple power five jobs that I was up for. Yes, that I felt like I was overqualified, not under overqualified, but God needed me to go to Jackson State and do what we ultimately did. That's right. Now, when you address that situation, I thank you. I thank you for clarifying that and addressing it, but. Let me tell you something, man. They did a heck of a job. They and did. I, I love their coach. I love what they've built. I love what they've established. Just to think about a team undefeated and not go to the playoffs, that is crazy, but it's no way business-wise because people don't think business, and we always do. You, you're not leaving Alabama out. I don't even know how you left Georgia out. That's right. Business-wise, you can't do that. You can't do that. Did they deserve it? Yes, they did. But – Coach Norvell coached his butt off, and we can't take nothing away from him. But the real question that you have, would you leave me at the college playoffs? 
in the group of young men that I'm coaching with a staff that that we've brought together. Ain't nowhere in the world. We yeah. box office. You got to see this. Unless you're crazy. You got to see this. And <laughs> you're going to see it. I wish I had those problems that yeah. Coach Nobel has. I wish I had those problems. There you go. And I love respect the heck out of him. I love that dude. You know, you love a lot of people. You show a lot of love to a lot of people, which people don't give you enough credit for, but to hell with them. You're going to keep marching on, <laughs> keep moving on, keep doing your thing. That's why you, I love you, dog. Because you, know, you 100. Now. You say, you know, I'm pretty transparent, but you say the stuff I want to say sometimes. There you go. So I, I, this is why I text you in the morning like, you cool, dog, 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 get that. <laughs> love you, bro. Keep on keeping on, man. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you and yours, man. Hey. You know we'll get up soon. I'll see you soon. Man, tell the family I said hi. Please. Love you, bro. Take it easy. All right. We all know how much of a hassle buying a car can be. You spend so much time driving around trying to find the perfect car, negotiating over the price, and worrying about the quality of the vehicle. But not anymore. Thanks to Vroom. Vroom is the better way to buy and sell used cars. When you go to Vroom.com, you can shop thousands of cars right from your phone. They have all the popular makes and models and no haggle pricing, You so you know you're getting a good deal. Best of all, they'll deliver your new ride directly to you. Vroom stands by its vehicles, too. Every car and truck from Vroom goes through a thorough inspection and reconditioning process and comes with a 90-day limited warranty. On top of that, you have seven days or 250 miles, whichever comes first, to make sure it's the car for you. And if you don't love it, you can return it. You can also sell or trade in your current car on Vroom, and they'll pick it up for free. Just answer a few questions about your car on the Vroom website, and you'll get an offer in as little as two minutes. You have no obligation to sell, so there's nothing to lose. So whether it's buying your next car, selling or trading in your current one, Vroom has you covered. So start shopping today at Vroom.com. That's Vroom.com. There you have it. The man is fantastic. Love talking to him. Love appreciate and appreciate talking to my brother. Wishing him nothing but the best. I have no doubt that next season is going to be even better. Four and eight is not something that I associate with primetime Deion Sanders. He's going to get a bunch of dogs, a bunch of hogs up in there to protect his son, to make sure they can run the football, to make sure they can keep defense off the field. All of these things I think are things that we can anticipate moving forward. Prime time is not known for settling, and I have no doubt he has no intentions of doing so here. So my thanks to the great one himself, the one and only Prime Time, Deion Sanders, for stopping by. Be sure to watch Coach Prime out now on Prime Video. And don't forget to pre-order Coach Prime's book, Elevate and Dominate, 21 Ways to Win on and Off the Field, wherever books are sold. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have a wonderful, happy, healthy Christmas holiday. I'm going to keep saying that to you until Christmas Day arrives, so just get used to it. Until next time, this is Stephen A. signing off. Peace and love, everybody.